Hi everyone, Mature Summer here. So, we're on the next day, October, mid-autumn, and we've got the field uh, growing up there. I've, I've taken a look. I need to take a look at what we own and just see what the... Okay, there's no horsepower requirement on, on this uh, sprayer. But I'm going to go ahead and get a medium tractor with some uh, narrow tires. So I'm going to get something that you know has 300 or so. I'm also going to try to do something that goes pretty quickly. So yeah, that Deutz far. is the fastest but just not sure if let's see all right because the Deutz far can use a front loader that one cannot so I think I also would like that option so let me see wheel weights wide tires wide tires rear twin twin Alright, narrow tires. But that's only 247. Oh, that's fancy. Um, I don't necessarily need a front loader. I would need GPS. Let me see if on the other ones, because again, I'm not entirely sure I need a front loader, but let me look at this one. Because if I go with the engine here, right, I can only get that to 300. Um, can I get narrow tires on this? I cannot. So the John Deere will not take narrow tires. So let's see. Massey Ferguson will do that. That's what I had before. Um, and get that up to 325 if I want. I don't know that I need that initially. Alright, Trailborg, Michelin. Alright, narrow tires, GPS. That'll give me 225. Again, I can do a front loader eventually, and I can get this thing to 325. So this really gives me the most flexibility. I'm going to go ahead and purchase that. All right, and then we're going to zip back out here to this area. And then um, to turn on the lights. So we are a few hours behind on um, server time at this point. So it's definitely getting uh, more and more challenging. That's for certain. But uh, again, I, I'm kind of at the whim of I don't want to place things early. The challenge will be, of course, as I start logging, I'm, I think I'm going to have some difficulty just challenge, placing things anyway, because uh, it's going to be dark and it'll be harder to see things. So, um, 
But yeah, I'm going to head over like I have been through Field 8. As far as updates around the server that aren't on the server, um, nothing new has come up for auction, which is good. Field 17 is still obviously not done. Uh, from the auction standpoint, nobody is bidding. Also, not surprising, um, I think, just positionally, the, the one that's best uh, or most likely to use it is Sears. It looks like he may not have been on the server for a few days. He's got the spreader kind of sitting at the, at the shop, which, you know, needs to get moved soon. It's been there. I think this is the second or third day. Uh, well, it's more that's certainly more than the second, but um, but uh, you know that will happen hopefully soon. And there we go. It's this early morning twilight, and obviously as the fall gets uh, later, daylight comes later anyway. So we've got narrow tires, so we should be able to go through the field. So the other thing I tried to take a look at, I ran around the field a bit. I haven't measured it yet. I, I need to do that still at some point. And like I said, I, you know, there's nothing to really see there, so I'm just going to report on it. I'm not going to video me running around. Um, and... It says we've got a 75% yield bonus, but it, it literally says that everywhere. I like ran up all the way to the corner, so I can't find anything about how or where the beehive is really stretching. It's a possibility, I guess, that because the canola is just, you know, at a point that it is now, like it's not flowering yet. Um, and so perhaps that is like when it shows up, like they really make it accurate that you get a bonus when there's flowers. I'm really not close enough. Um, all right, I guess not. So I'm gonna get going on this at least so that we have some progress. So we've got 5,200 liters of fertilizer. And the challenge, unfortunately, is going to be... It's so dark, we're certainly not going to be able to see anything. Um, so let me unfold this. And then we'll run a pass this way. get this done. So I think we're good. We'll get the GPS working. Not necessarily in this direction, but well, actually we may because we're not going to go north and south um, on this end. But no, what I won't be able to see is like where I sprayed. I'm going to have to just uh, kind of feel I am close to the edge of the field. I've got this covered. So I think that gets me at an angle that's pretty good for covering what I need, especially when I get down there. And hopefully I can get this done with one load. Otherwise, I'm going to have to drive... Um, and get resupplied just like we've been doing. Now, this is a little faster trailer that it goes, or tractor that it goes 31, so that's a good thing. But, um, you know, it's still a drive, it's still time, so just makes me long more for having a yard where I can have some silos and, you know, while getting uh, the four or five silos on the supply side I'd need to cover all the supplies is going to take a little bit of space. You know, it makes it a lot more 
workable at that point. All right, I just want to make sure I am covered. Obviously, I'm clearing out the lime on that end, fertilizing it a bit. And I guess I'm moving down closer to the border. So just kind of keeping an eye on that line to see if it either snaps up or down, or if it stays the same width and I'm truly going straight which at this point I think we're good, because even if it moves a little bit, it's not going to move enough to get off the field before we're done. All right. So we got that done. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lines and do my favorite dots. And then... Um, keep going. But, you know, this should go relatively quickly, so it takes about 10% going across the field. And it just theoretically doesn't look like it's spraying straight behind, but I'm sure it would be quite irritating if it gave me a line. Oh, I guess we're going to have a little bit there that isn't covered. I guess I moved over a bit. Um, I don't know that it's going to be worth spraying for that tiny bit because, yeah, we're getting closer. I think at some point we're going to match up. We'll see if I have a little bit left. Maybe I'll do it, but... You know, either way, it would be a bit of a, a run. But yeah, this is a good wide piece. I'm going to take a look at the other sprayer that Swede had bought. It should be under crop protection. There you go. So yeah, that's 48. This one's 36, so it's about the same, but it's 259,000. And so yeah, the Rubicon has a much larger capacity. Um, you know, and I think, again, this one is 37, whoops, I think it's 37, no, 33 meters. So I guess it's an additional 15 meters, so it's almost another 50%, but, you know, the other piece of it was when we bought this, um, you know, it's 57,000 versus basically 500,000. So I'm not really sure that it, it makes sense to worry about that because the extra money is just a bit more challenging. Now it's certainly obviously a little easier to drive that, um, I would imagine, but I don't know, maybe one of these days, we'll see. It's not like I've been you know, hurting for money, I guess, so I could do it, but just hasn't been one of those things that seemed like a good investment. And 33 meters is, you know, pretty good compared to the fact that I've got 18 meters on my solid fert spreader. So, keep moving along. We've got at least two passes here. Um, I think we're going to have the problem on the other direction of um, maybe having to run a thin pass on near that island. Hopefully it'll all line up, but we can't get lucky constantly. Obviously with the smaller 18 meter things it was easier, but now I think it's true. I can shrink the width on this, so I could always um, run that thinner pass, so I, I might do that then, because then I'm not wasting as much. I assume the consumption will go down. Might be an interesting and fun test to try that, to get that little strip that I missed, and you know, just do it as a a one meter type thing or whatever.
I just have to line it up appropriately. So I think as long as I kind of ran down the edge line, that would work. And just to be sure that the lines don't move, I think, uh, you know, I need to do it before I started to go north and south and then tried to snap the lines back. I think they'd go back where they are, but I'm not 100% sure. And since, again, I can't see because it's too dark, and even if it wasn't dark, I think there's enough coverage of plant growth now that I don't think I'd be able to see anyway. Um, I have to rely on the GPS lines since I can't see. It's kind of where I was headed with that abbreviated discussion. All right. So yeah, it's always a little tricky with these wide width things about what hits the field and when just to make sure you're getting it all. All right. Yep, so we've got the next one, but yeah, I don't think we're going to reach over to the island yet. I think that's going to get close, but not enough. So the difficulty we're going to have, um, as I said, as we plan ahead, we've still got to put herbicide down on this field at some point uh, in in theory. Otherwise, we're taking a little bit of hit with the weeds. Um, I should probably get in the habit of doing that because you know once we get to precision farming, it's something we would be doing. That's where we were in Ohio, and we were basically doing the fertilizer. You know, we're doing everything, but the benefit of the precision farming is, like, we don't have to do this second pass of fertilizer. It's all put down appropriately with one pass. You don't consume any less, but it saves this working time, which is likely going to be an hour or two, uh, even with this. So even though I've got a pretty wide coverage area, it is seven miles an hour, and as we can see, it just takes a little bit of time to go up and down the field that way. But we've got to do that on the field, and then, again, we're two days away from being able to start working on the yard. So before that I'm going to have to make a decision on the wood chipper. I think the chipper's cheap enough that I may just say I'm going to buy it um, and not play with the leasing option. Because I think it's like 50000 or something and then I just won't feel... Because the problem I know I'm going to have is you know there is a, a fee to lease. So it's like if you do things multiple times, um, you know, it's not it's not just the hourly rate. You're paying kind of that rental fee, and that turns out to usually be 20 or 30 percent, you know, t two or three times higher than the um, than the uh, sorry. The words are not coming to me. The, then the hourly rental, or the daily rental, and so then I may be like, if I've got to cut a few, you know, a handful of trees, I suddenly might be like, eh, I'll just not do it. I, I'll pass that opportunity up because I'm not going to make the money back on doing that. Because as it is, it's sometimes a challenge, especially with the tree cutting permits in FSN, and then the equipment. Uh, you know, you're not really making money on it, and it, we're just hemorrhaging a little bit more doing it that way. But I'll have to take a look and 
run some numbers. The problem is it's hard to kind of understand exactly when the leasing items hit for farming simulator. So and the other thing I could potentially take a look at is can I lease it from a dealership because today is the first day I think dealerships are supposed to be back. I didn't check to see if they were online because I don't have a need for it right now. But All right. So now the problem we're going to have is, yeah, thinking ahead in the future, um, while I can shrink the width, I think it basically turns things off from the edges in. So obviously I'm not going to be able to get close to those trees with these arms outstretched this way. And so that piece that's left is also a thin strip. Um, so yeah, I just may kind of do my learning here and leave that one alone because that will be like a full spray which is a lot of herbicide just for that um, thin strip there. So I think I would spend more on the herbicide than I'm going to get in benefit. All right, so we're going to turn this back on. And I'm going to change my working width. Yeah, two meters, I think, should be enough. But I think, basically, I need to be off the edge of the field here. It's like right there. Um, let me just make sure. Yep. The question is, is it really two meters? Um, so let's see. But yes, it appears it's operating as I figured. It's not going out nearly as fast as it was. Let me just see. Alright, I probably want to make it 8 meters because it's not really covering. It's still not doing it. Am I just not lined up right? Alright. I think we're okay, but probably need to head more this way just to make sure that I'm not doing things because we know this side of the line is covered. And at this point, that little bit I've got, I'm not going to go play with. You know, but it does verify. I mean, you can see the spray is from the center out, which would make sense that that would be how it would be engineered. So once we go and cut out the yard, you know, like I said, I mean, I guess it's potentially visible enough. I mean, that's the thing with, like, Farm Simulator Night, is it doesn't get pitch black. Um, I think we're done at this point. Well, technically we weren't, but uh, that's good enough. Um, otherwise, I'm just never going to never going to get done. So let me... Oops, I didn't want to turn it off. I wanted to change it to vertical. And... Alright, I need to move this over because otherwise I think I'm, I'm not quite out of it yet. Oh, there comes the rain. So we can hear it. I don't know that it's easy to see it. And so, we'll go ahead, get going here, and then turn it on. 
and we'll get this field going. So yeah, that is one of the nice things with FS-22. They've got that, like, real thunder sound, which is, frankly, kind of crazy. Um, because it's really, uh, really good. So, I do appreciate that improvement of the sound. Turn that off, because now we're not changing the width. And then, um, you know, I do have to run the headlands up there as well. But yeah, at this point, I think, just looking at this, I don't think we're going to be able to get the field done without refilling. So it kind of is what it is with that. And we'll make the best of it. So now we can see the rain a bit. I also was looking... It almost appears like this way I can tell it's spraying in the center. But the other way... I mean, I guess you can tell now that I look at the wheels. But, you know, maybe it's because there's just no lights on that sprayer piece because it looks like there's illumination on the sprayer arm itself so that you can see things. But, um... So that makes more sense, because I was like, well, is the middle not being sprayed? But I'm sure that's the two meters to begin with, and then when it goes to eight, it just adds, obviously, three meters on each side. Alright, so I'll... I think this will let me get up here. I might move over a bit just to make sure I clear it so that I can get to the edge of the field here. There we go. Because otherwise when I turn, I don't think I'm going to have enough um, to be right at the edge. I'd have to back up and so forth, and obviously that's a bit challenging to do. Make sure this arm is out. It is. All right, and then we'll start spraying here, and we should be okay, I think. We'll double check later. And then we'll probably just go ahead and whatever we need to run down the edge, we will. Hopefully that will line up a little bit better than it did around the islands. So these are some of the challenges with, um, you know, not just having wide open fields. I mean, that's what you run into a little bit, which is kind of the added fun of the farming simulator side, is figuring out, okay, how do I best do this? Should I, you know, paint around the edges first and then show up or, or what? All right, so it looks like we're going to have to go here and then... We'll line ourselves up, and I think we're going to be clear. Yep. So, unless we clip ourselves on that tree, but I think we're going to be okay. Alright. Just takes a while. With the size of this map, I think it takes a bit. I don't know if that's a little tree next to the big tree that's going to hang us up. Oh, it didn't, thank goodness. So at this point, I think we're good, because, well, um, we'll be clear. Now the challenge is, again, we've got a segment of field here that is going to need a little bit of touching up as well. <laughs> so I might do it. I've I've done other things like this where... I've, uh, sorry, I'm just paying attention to my wheel because it is turned a bit, so I'm immediately going to go off. I need to get this headland done. Um, but what I was going to say is I've, I've backed in and, and basically done thin edges and just done it that way. I can always do that and use the full width of the arm. And you kind of don't have to do it that often. 
or that many passes to cover the full length because of the reach and the span of the equipment. So I'm going to turn that off because otherwise I don't think I'm going to be able to tell um, where I'm at and I'm just going to overspray. You know, just such a little piece, I don't know that it's going to make sense to, to touch it up. So let me head... Oh, I'm on this side, let me do that and... We'll just do this part of the field here. So I think I'm in... Oh no, I'm not even close. I don't know what I'm thinking. The darkness is confusing me, clearly. Alright, so the one thing I am going to do is I am going to run the pass along this side while I'm here, because we're going to have the same issue where I'm going to have to turn around and I can't reach appropriately. But yeah, we're definitely going to need to refill this. Probably just once, but uh, we'll, we will need to get some more and then we're going to have the problem of um, you know, clearing this out to then use it for herbicide. Because once I have the silos again, I, I don't need multiple sprayers because there aren't there's an, an opportunity to use multiple sprayers at once um, because we can't do any automation, so you just need the one implement in each case. Yeah, that deer needs to move. I don't think they want to be sprayed with fertilizer. It's probably better than being sprayed with herbicide, but I don't know, maybe not. Either way, I'm sure neither one is incredibly healthy for them. Alright, well now I am over here, so I guess I'll do what I was doing, which was head over to this side and, and then work on this side of the field. Alright, I just want to make sure, so I'm literally right, right where it ended. Hoping I didn't go too far. Light it up. There we go. Alright, so we're just at about 30%. But we've got quite a few passes of the long portion of the field here, which is where, like I said, I think it's just a, a bridge too far to assume that we're not going to be able to, or that we are going to be able to get this done. Alright. This could be an FM that maybe I'm not aware of. Didn't change their name, because uh, Fire had let us know a couple times we had someone else showing up that I didn't know their handle, and he said, yep, that was me. I just didn't realize I needed to change my name every time I came in. But if they're not looking to chat, I guess at this point I want to focus on what I need to get done so that hopefully I can do exactly that and get it done. But yeah, the question I've got a little bit on the herbicide, and I'm going to have to see if the map tells me anything, is um, we didn't spray for weeds on the FS19 servers until we got precision farming because there just weren't enough of them to justify the cost. And I don't know that we have, you know, if we have the same issue now. Um, so yeah, we'll have to look at the map and see what we see. 
that's really close there and starting that up because like I said there's no way to tell where I've really sprayed so I'm kind of going by feel and that's not a very accurate way to do it so yeah the one thing you know we do have showers so uh, you know oh, there we go it looks like it's Ginger, so maybe he went in and changed his name. See, so yeah, I'm not sure where he ended up. It looks like I assume he's the yellow farm. So once I start heading up the field again, I'll um, maybe take a peek, see if we can see where he's at, because even if he tells us, I, I, mean, I think most of them are down south by 22, down where we plowed by 17 is where most of the small ones that they can buy initially are. We go 29. So, I'll take a look at that once um, once we do that. He might have gotten added since uh, last night. So, yep, it certainly is great to be back. I will agree. Um, you know, it's one of those, like, I think we all felt, I mean, we were working, some of us were working 19 a little more, but, you know, either way, it was still, it just felt like we were kind of buying time. I don't need it yet. Here we go. Do this, and then head this way. Am I stuck on a tree? I am. Fun stuff. What is happening? I'm trying to turn the tractor and it's not turning more than the sprayer. I didn't realize the sprayer, actually the wheels, turn, which is nice. Because um, that will help with some sharper turns. Um... You know, and that I know is a feature on, like, the Rubicon sprayer, too, is it's four-wheel steering. but it's just a lot there. All right, 29 is, there you go. So he's over here. And then, you know, if we look, all right, so he's the yellow rooster. So there you go. So down to 12%. Filling soon. Let me get back to the map and get back up where I can see my field. So that's the fun with the 4x maps. Obviously, we had that in Seneca too, where you're like pulling it up, but then you're scrolling. So yeah, moving along again, you know, in future years, probably going to do less of kind of this continuous live Let's Play. Um, 
and do more jump cuts and so forth to... whoops, shoot. Must have hit the, uh, well I clearly hit the axe somehow. Alright. There we go. Um, you know, because it'll, you, you'll kind of know what the process is and so forth, but just giving everybody who wants to see more the opportunity to ride along and see more. And of course, you know, if, if people do comment, hey, just, you know, leave the raw video, because I, I, I'm always torn what makes more sense. Um, you know, obviously, if people just want a few minutes of, of stuff, they can jump around in any video and just kind of click around, watch a, a minute, click again, you know, move it another hour, watch a minute, kind of see where things are at. And, and those who want something longer uh, have it available, where if I time lapse or cut things, like someone who wants more, there's no way for them to get more. So I'm always a little bit torn on what to really do with these episodes. You know, but I'm also cognizant, just, you know, even looking at the stats as things happen. You know, when you're a content creator in YouTube, like, you, you know, you've, you're using the YouTube studio, and some of what it gives you on each video is, like, you know, what the average duration of times they're watched and whatever, and every video is a fraction of, of its size. I mean, so sometimes the argument is... You know, if you make a longer video, you're going to get longer watch time because they might still only watch 10%. But you know, if it's an 80-minute video, you're going to—they'd watch eight minutes versus you know watching a few seconds of a 15-minute uh, video or something. Um, all right, I'm like half debating, do I even do this? But I just would hate to, like, go fill up, and then I'm suddenly still short 100 liters. And from a measurement perspective, it's also simpler if I empty it, because I know I've used the full 5,200 liters. Alright, so it looks like I keep missing a few pieces here and there, but I'm doing what I can, and this probably is realistic to what happens with you know farmers out there in the field anyway is they do what they can but you can't always guarantee you're hitting everything and the goal is you know be 99% covered and and then you get that benefit over most of it where is the road yeah, this is definitely different. It's 6 a.m. and it's still, like, almost impossible to see beyond my headlights. So, um... So yeah, we'll head back over, get more fertilizer. Yeah, if we get a, pl a uh, planter instead of a cedar, I think I've been calling the thing I was using a planter, but it's actually the other way around. The things that do um, corn and stuff are the planters usually, um, and what I'm using now is a cedar. But if I do, say, sunflower um, or something like that, I would need another piece of equipment, and then those use liquid fertilizer. And since liquid fertilizer is a little less expensive, um, at least per liter, then I may want to do that. So this will be something I'm going to keep a close eye on when I put these costs into my spreadsheet, because, um, you know, the first first uh, load of fertilization, or the first pass of fertilization, was done 
with the solid furt in the cedar. Set it right. Um, but now the second one over the same ground is done with liquid. So, but I, you know, I've got the dollars of fertilizer that I put down on the field. And so I can see specifically, is it less expensive, or even though it's less expensive per liter, the application rate makes it similar or maybe even more expensive to do liquid fertilization. Because I, I vaguely recall, uh, and that's why I stayed away from liquid fertilization for so long, and really only switched to it when, okay, what am I, there it is. I'm like, I'm not going the right way, but I am. It's just, the road wasn't appearing. I'm like, there's just river and river and river. Um, but that's one of the reasons I stayed away from liquid fertilization so long, was it was, um, I was told it was more expensive. And so it was like, well, you know, why would I do that? The equipment is more costly. I need the spreader anyway to put down lime. I can't spray lime. So it's like, you know, why why buy extra equipment that I don't need? I guess I should have looked at the row number before I left instead of what I'm doing because this is incredibly inefficient here. That's where I'm at. All right. So I'll verify that while I unfold here. Yep, this is the correct row. So I'll just let it do its thing because we're not too far away here from where we want to be. All right. I'll turn this on, or at least I'll try to turn it on and get, there we go, the cruise control going. Hello, there we go. And we'll get this field knocked out, or at least try to. I've actually only got about five more minutes, so we're not going to get done. But good news is, I guess we'll end this probably in some daylight. But now there's more clouds. But yeah, because that was going to be my comment, is um, the cloud cover seems to be pretty light, I've seen, when it rains in FS22, unless it's really raining, because I think they have a different icon. There might even be one with lightning, or maybe I'm thinking of something totally wrong. Maybe I'm just mixing my local news with my uh, FS22. <laughs> yeah, this is... Definitely having some challenges for some reason coming through here. All right, not quite done. There we go. As I was going to say, this is actually, I didn't realize without looking at the map, I'm glad I checked, although I think I would have kind of figured it out up here, is that... Uh, So, yeah, um, depending on what you're watching, you might, the text might be too small. So Ginger's saying he doesn't have permission to buy vehicles on his farm, which uh, obviously is, is not a good thing. All right, I'm going to explain something to him here in a second, because what he's talking about isn't the same thing but it's always hard, a little bit challenging.
So yeah, what he's thinking is, he's like, well, I joined my farm, but joining your farm doesn't mean that you have permission. did leave a little bit, I think. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. So, um... So, we'll see. Sorry, I didn't mean to go dark, but, um, or I guess it's not dark. You can see things, although it is dark, um, <laughs> but, um, you can't hear things, because I stopped talking, because I was kind of thinking about what he was doing. Yeah, I'm just so close, um. Anyway, duty calls. Um, certainly need to do what I need to do in real life, so I'm not going to play any games there. And um, I'll be back to finish the tiny bit later on, because uh, there's not much here, but there's enough that, um, you know, it's, it's more time than I've got. All right, so I'm back to finish up. So, still raining, as the thunder answers me, and verifies that that's the fact. So, um, yeah, cloud cover is getting a little more normal. So, it looks sunny that way, but the icons aren't showing that we're going to have sun anytime soon, so... I'm imagining we won't. So I'll have to catch that little piece here. Probably just back into that and get that done. So yeah, I'll we'll have to get past the area there. I had a plan. It was a poor one. Um, all right, let me keep going there. And I don't know. This may be just as fast. To just swing this around. There we go. That should give us. Good coverage there, it does. And then I'll just 
Head over this way. And hop in the lane. And that should get us spraying appropriately. It's a little challenging sometimes if you're not just immediately going from one row to the next because um, just always not always easy to tell where you've been. So assuming five or ten minutes and we'll have this done. Yeah, and now we can definitely see that back spray a lot more. Turn off the lights. It is 8.30 in the morning, even though it's dark from the storm. Alright, that's right. I didn't run a headland here because I just figured it would be easier than trying to guess if I was hitting the headland. So, we'll let it go this way. Uh, a little bit more in the water than I would have liked, but it didn't give me any warnings, so I guess I'm okay. Alright, and then just start spraying there. Is it spraying? No. What did I hit? I thought I hit the correct key, but I guess I did not. Oh, it is spraying. Why does it look like it's not spraying? Oh boy. I'll just keep going. I should have looked at the uh, counter instead of the map. Or not the map, the trying to see the spray. So yeah, from that side it's clear. From this side, not so much. And maybe that's because there's sunlight on that side, and so the sun is reflecting off of the uh, liquid fertilizer. I don't know. It's interesting how the lighting works on that. Which sounds very angry. Alright. So we got that. Whoops, that didn't work. Always a fun... Alright, now we're good. Should be about there. So hopefully we didn't miss anything, and if we did, I guess we did. So, not quite sure if we really just have one pass, or we have a pass and a piece. But I don't know that it's much more than one more, you know, and, and one more pass. I think it'll just be a tiny bit beyond that, because this is a much wider arm than one would think, which is great. I mean, that's obviously the goal. So I'm going to start turning, because, yeah, if I turn, it, that arm obviously swings and gets where we need it to be um, in the correct location. So let's see. There we go. It's counting, even though I can't tell. And, yeah, it's truly just a little piece that is left, but it is some that is left, so... We will get that fertilized, because that's enough of a stretch that maybe what I'll do again is I'll turn on the 8 meter and kind of drive down the center of that, and I should be able from the other side to see the spray, and then I'll uh, just use the appropriate amount of fertilizer. So I do like that feature of this sprayer. It's definitely nice. I'm not sure you can do that on the Rubicons. I think it's 
the full amount or not, but perhaps they do offer that. Alright, um, so looks like we've got Swede joining up. Alright, I'm gonna do Control Z, 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 there we go. Put that away. And then we'll head this way. sprayer and I think there you go as long as I have the spray across the blue line so I'll move over a bit that way and then that will get every part of the field we need just making sure that spray sits over the edge And then, you know, we'll get that done, but it basically took three, four, five liters or so up this route to finish that, so quite good. this, but um, just kind of leaving stuff everywhere, which is really not what I'd prefer to do, but we've got what we've got, but I need to be able to get the herbicide taken care of, so I'm going to pull in this way, and I'm going to unload here. There we go. Because, yeah, it usually does it to the right of the trailer. And I thought there was enough room. Not quite sure what he means. Maybe he has it set as Swedish. Um, since he's from Sweden, obviously. But... All right. So, shut off. Whoop. Everything is shut off. Everything is good. So, we're all set with the work we needed to do here, and I will see you next time.